no intro, just straight into it. You meet Forgado, a person who is part of the Sentinels, who stops intruders like the corrupted or foreign nations trespassing for weeks. He has two other people in the Sentinels. Let's chat first with him. So he's super surprised to see you, that you, the dragon, are awake. So now, before you go and meet the queen, you have to help win a battle. Hmm, pretty smooth sailing. You win the battle, of course, and then stuff happens. You meet the queen, and then some person appears. Hortensia, the princess of Illusia, is back. She is very not well because she wants her life back. Literally one of their quick quotes. For goodness sake, lots of tragic things happen to her. Like she lost her sister to you. And now the father also died. Now he's alone. Doesn't even know where retainers are. That were literally her best friends. But then you fight her. But she doesn't want to fight. Then she gets brainwashed by the four hounds. Okay, I think it's time to explain who they are. Zephyr. Her backstory is she wants children. But only with the Bell Dragon. And he doesn't want to impregnate her. Maybe she's too eager to do it, I don't know. Maybe just like people aren't interested. Well anyway, whatever the reason, she's lacking in tender love between a man and a woman and it's breaking her apart. Lisa, her friends aren't enough, she just wants a deep lover to get with to heal her mental wounds. On the other side, we have Briss, who is a masochist. It turns out he got beat by his family, but he secretly enjoys, well not enjoys, but likes the pain. So now he, he goes to the with the four hounds to dish out pain and we see it too. I really like his design where it looks like it's a brain damage on his forehead. It's pretty cool. I think it's a tattoo though. And Mana, she was a girl, but because she's born as a girl and not a boy, she got abandoned because the, the mother wanted a boy. Could have been another one and kept her, I don't know. And lastly, Marvia. Well, he's like a double agent. He just wants to help Vale personally and save her, but it does the hound's request so he can stay with her. And now to explain Vale, she's actually got two different forms the normal one and the evil one. They change each time she falls asleep. She's so wholesome and nice. In the normal one, the evil one, she's like a dastardly villain. I think what they're going for is like normal one is emotionally smart and the evil one is well you know what I mean smart and the person who did it who gave the two forms Zephyr she, I think she used her love for someone and gave it veil because it's like she really adores him in the evil form they get used a lot in like battles it's like okay you fight them when you fight brainwash Hortensia afterwards in typical anime style the fighting stops the brainwashing and one of the best scenes in the game happens. Ivy and you and no one else because privacy explain how, you need to, how she needs to come with them to save Illusia and the world and Hortensia who is usually so comically over the top goes really somber and talks about her pleasant moments in Illusia and it's really sad and then she gets resolved to fight for you and Ivy because she wants her life back. It was quite nicely written and the accompanying music was really powerful too. Okay, so there's like a, a filler battle with Dance Guy, but it's not really important, so I'll skip it. <laughs> Impulse, I literally forgot to mention Tamara. I don't know how I did that, but she kind of just exists. You meet Hortense's retainers and they stole one emblem ring. Erica! Did you get that? That was Ephraim's death quote, apparently. So they're being chased by the four hounds and the armor but so you intercept them and save them and fight and win. Hortensia is very happy indeed so it's like she's getting nice and happy again just like all times. Wait, wait. I forgot to mention my fav one of my favorite scenes the tragic one. You see Vale and you are just so angry you literally literally like seconds away from murdering her and she's so confused because she doesn't have memories because the, the angry one, evil one, doesn't share memories 
and it really pulls at heartstrings because of how she's so confused and sad. She just wants to her friends to be happy. She leaves out of fear and then Gris appears and tells her they were just imagining it and she believes it for some reason. You head to Flora Port in Firenay. The whole city is on fire! That was a Sonic 06 reference if you don't get that. But basically it's explained there's a student out of spite. Like they're just attacking civilians for no good reason. Why are they doing it? To anger your character and make them mad. Okay, so really is normal and she talks to you. And then she's like, no, I did not do this. Please believe me. But then you're just mad, un unreasonable even. And tell her, you are Sunbone's daughter. So I hate you now. Wow. Just because they're father and daughter doesn't mean they're both evil. Well, well obviously. It's like, she thinks it's her doing it because she's been evil at one point, but yeah. Veil's brain splitting apart because of how confused she is, and she asks Gris if she ordered the attack, and he says yes. And then Zephyr hammers it into her by saying, it was you, you planned all this, you killed them. It's just too much for her though, so she faints, and then the evil one comes out, and then it's the realisation that hits your character and you feel so much guilt. There's also a cool transformation scene where she turns and it's pretty like saddening. You know, seeing as how I don't share memories with that pathetic little girl, I simply had no idea you and I were friends now. I hope that you can forgive my rudeness. Your apology means nothing to me. You're not Vale. Give her back! Rest assured that I am Vale. Yes. In fact, I am Vale in her truest form. Only one of us deserves the honor of calling the Great Bell Dragon her father. That honor belongs to me and me alone. My friends, it's time to fight! So now, you're in more despair because the person who is fueling your hatred was actually innocent. And you just feel all this guilt inside. It's like, what have I even been doing? I've been. I've been saying all these horrible things to her, and she didn't even do it. While you're moping, you see her going away into a ship. A boat, I mean. And she throws something at you. It's an emblem ring. Oh my god, she's so good to me. I thought she'd hate men and want to kill me or something. But she's still trying to be nice. And we're still on good terms after all that happened. Okay, so there's like some weird filler chapters, but I'm just gonna skip them because I can't bother going through them. Chapter 20 or 24, you see Gris and he's maniacally laughing like some kind of bad man. And you're like, why is he laughing? He found something out that you are the Fell Dragon. This means, if you can't figure it out, that you're related to Vale, if you didn't know. I'll go more into that detail later. So you're like, that can't be true. I am the divine dragon. My mother told me so. You're in denial and you're like, no way, I don't even believe you, I'm such, such a good liar. Then he's like, well why do you use your voice to summon and not your thoughts or emotions? And then you're like, oh shit. You think back and you realise your mother just didn't say anything, but you did. Okay, so it's legit. I am the divine, not the divine dragon. I am the fair dragon. But that doesn't change anything, does it? I am still a good person, right? But obviously, yeah, you are. But it still upsets her, them, very much. I mean, why do I keep using he or she? It says they, because you can choose his gender, oh my god. Anyway, you fight him, and then you win. Then he retreats. Everyone is convincing you about the revelation that happened. But it doesn't help that much. Later on, you start moping about how you lost your emblem wings and how it could happen again at any time. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Mana and Mavia are like abandoned from the four hounds because of how bad they're doing. So they team up with you and they come with you to a place. So anyway, well you weren't at they weren't actually like, abandoned, but they're just scared to come back because of how badly they've been doing in battle. So they go to the hounds with with the dragon, you. 
and the seer and the mad at Movia and Mana. But then Movia protects Mana by saying it wasn't her plan, it was his all to him. So he says to go back, but she doesn't want to. Then something terrible happens. Mana gets murdered for no good reason even. Again, why does it always happen? By Zephyr. Zephyr just did it because she hates betrayal. So yeah, Movia just goes, well in turn there, you can tell he's mad, but he stays calm, so he goes on your side forever, and he fights with you to avenge Mana's death. The battle here was quite hard. You have Bale here as well. You might be confused why she did that, Zephyr, but it was because Mana tries to destroy the new magic spell on Bale. She uses her axe and it kind of cracks, but not really. As fate turns out, Mana's attack did work and it cracks and then she's back to normal. But then, she gets attacked. Who attacked her? Sombron, but then you protect her, and then you literally die. Then stuff happens like Sombron casually making a new land that's evil. And what now? You're dead. What's gonna happen? 